Yo, 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 what's up? It's Diamond Mouta. Welcome to the channel. If you're new to me, thank you very much for clicking on this video. I'm Chris Bilton. I was a jeweler. I was a professional jeweler in the UK for over 20 years. And I'm living in Japan and making YouTube uh, jewelry making instructional videos. So welcome. I hope you like it. Why not click like and subscribe if you're into this kind of thing. Um, right, I'm doing a polishing video finally. Like, quite a few people have requested it and I've had two in the last like, week. So I thought right, I've really got to get on with it. I am a Diamond Mounter first. And I'm a clean and polisher second. I've done loads and loads and loads and loads of polishing throughout my career. So I got quite good at it and I learned a lot and I taught myself little, just sort of accidentally discovered little tricks, little tips. Uh, so there's a lot of things I can share. Little, there's advice on like whether you're polishing pendants, chains, fine chains, large chains, earrings, the rings or different types of rings. There's always a little trick on how to hold it, how to move it, how much polish to use, what type of mop, what type of brush. I've got a lot of stuff figured out. There's probably a lot of stuff I've forgotten, so I should. Uh, that's another reason why I should upload more often on this subject, because I, I would have forgotten stuff over the years, because I'm not doing as much polishing as I used to, nowhere near it. So right, first of all, polish your motor. If you're like a hobbyist kind of jeweler working at home, like I am now, I guess, um, you can get away with this kind of thing, but for what I used to do, really, you want to get really good polish on like, especially platinum pieces. Platinum is a very hard wearing metal. It's difficult to get a nice shine on things. Um, you need something more powerful than this. Even for me, really, this is not powerful enough. I can push against the spinning mop and it's just slowing down. I can get it to stop. Uh, it's not really powerful enough, but you can get quite a good polish on stuff. <laughs> more powerful, and bigger is better than this. Before you even start polishing, to get a few things ready, no kind of particular order, a little bin for your polishing stuff, like this, uh, the cotton wool rolls I use for doing the inside of rings. They get worn out, um, chuck them in your bin. Uh, the brush, I've got a little paint brush. Keep your filter clean. This one's at the back, it's a bit awkward, so I do keep it clean. This one's got a kind of foamy sponge stuff that you can change, but I've, I've never changed it. I just keep, keep the fluff off of it. And uh, you'll get bits like that. And obviously turning the fan off and doing it is quicker because obviously it's sucking, so it's harder to get the fluff off if it's switched on. So turn it off, give it a brush. Uh, that's what a brush is for, so I keep the brush and the little bin handy. This is, uh, these are all my little attachments for the micro motor, for the pendant motor. I've got a, there's a paper disc in there. That shouldn't be there. I thought I'd lost one. All right, I'll go back over there. So yeah, I like to keep these in a bag because it's ideal to keep them clean because on your bench, there's like a, a lot of metal dust basically and dirt and stuff. So try and keep them clean so there's only polish on there. Because if you've got a bit of metal in there, obviously that's no good for polishing. Right, um, in my little box, got this Tripoli grease. It's just like an industry standard. I don't even really know if there's any variations of that. It's just the brown stuff. It's not expensive. You get a big lump of it. The, I mean, it comes so big, it's actually awkward to hold. It's quite heavy to put on the mop. So I used to, I'm a black belt, yeah. So I used to just hold one side and just go bang and just bang it in half. But whatever you've got to do to, to break it in half. A half of the big lump is quite nice. And you just keep wearing it down, wearing it down. Uh, over the year, they take ages to get through, but you end up with like a little cube. It's because you hold it that way or you hold it that way. And then after you've got a bit of a cube, then you start taking the corners off it and then, then you end up with a little ball. <laughs> it's really difficult to use. So it goes from this massive lump down to this little thing. And eventually you just can't hold it anymore and it just pings off. Uh, you need, I've got a few soft, well, for, for this polish, is this video going well or not? <laughs> I think not. Uh, for, for this one, I've got a, sometimes people like stitch mops. This is a, that's what I mean by stitch mop, stitched on the side. Stops them separating so much, but you don't really need to. This one's quite coarse. It's got a slightly thicker sort of fabric, or the like discs held together, slightly stronger material. This is good for this one. This is a really important part of polishing. So this is what, at the state, it's the first stage of polishing. And I think most jewelers don't do enough of this. You've got to do more than you might imagine to really get the scratches off and really get, get a piece of jewelry, get, get, get the metal really smooth. Uh, and that makes less work at the next stages and also you'll get a better result. So this is one, it's probably the most overlooked in its importance stage of polishing, doing this bit. Uh, so yeah, you've got a slightly coarser mop for the grease. Then in silver, softer mop, 
and rouge. Rouge brings up silver really well, but this polish is gets really airborne and it's really sticky. If you do a lot of it, you can feel it in your lungs like you've been breathing it in. It's not good stuff. Gets just goes all over your hand, gets stuck to stuff, like the edges of your, if you've got long sleeves, the edges will go all red, it's horrible. And even washing it off, it's just kind of just spreads around, it's horrible stuff. So I try to use that as little as possible. So I'll go from this one, because I do a lot of silver, yeah, so if I'm polishing silver, I'll do this one, then I'll do most of the brightening up with a green mop. The mop's not green, but the polish is green. Verd. Dialux Verd, that's what this is. Uh, again, an industry standard. Um, not really meant to use it on silver, but it works good. And then I'll just brighten it up with a red one. Um, 18 karat white gold is really good. Just all, all gold, platinum, I do loads. It's just an industry standard. After this, use green with a softer mop. And then, if I'm doing platinum, where's my other mop? Hang on, hang on, hang on. I've got some big mops. I've got a really soft one, which I keep just for yellow. I've got a little ball of yellow left. Um, the yellow, I think it's... Um, where I bought it, I'm sure it didn't say it was specific for platinum. It was like meant for steel or something. It's just for harder metals. But it's, it's, like a, it's a bit waxy, but it's mu it feels much harder than that. It's a bit less greasy somehow. It's like a dry, hard polish. Brightens up polish really well. Uh, brightens up platinum really well, sorry. So I've got a mop just for yellow, just for platinum. That's what this one's for. And you can see it's quite new, it hasn't been used that much. Um, still get loads of fluff coming off it. Ooh, breaking in new mops, that's a, that's a polishing video in itself. Um, yeah, stitch mop, look. Yeah, this is for that. Much, bit coarser. You can push really hard, because they're all stitched together. You can get really cut into metal with that. But these are a bit big on this motor. You can, you can just about use them, but they're a bit big. Polishing the inside of rings, you need these finger felts. Some of them have got wood inserts. I don't like the wood inserts because they seem to just not hold on very well. Like the hole is never very good in there. And you can't drill them out because if, if you, well, maybe if you've got a, what's it called? A pendant drill, is it? Uh, that goes straight down. If you can hold that really steady and go straight down, maybe you're all right. But if it's just me using a hand drill, I can't do it accurate, accurately enough. And if I put it on there and the hole's not good, it's going to have a bit of wobble, a lot of vibration. So I just leave them as they are and they don't screw on very well at all. So sometimes you've got to really yank them on tight to get them to stay where you want them. Uh, but yeah, you need these for polishing the inside of rings. Polishing just, this is a video in itself, just polishing the inside of rings is difficult to do and most people don't do a good job. Uh, it's hard to achieve, right? Especially in platinum, something's a bit wide. Uh, yeah, a lot of work doing the inside of rings. But it makes a big difference on a finished piece of jewelry, a nice high, high quality piece of jewelry. You've got to get the whole thing polished really nicely. Um, if you've got these finger felts with a plastic insert, I think they're much better. But this one doesn't screw on as much, so I'm, I'm going over the edge there. But see, there's a problem, another problem with these small units. Things go outside of the <laughs> outside of the polishing motor, so you're polishing on the edge here. <laughs> but the polishing, uh, sorry, the pl plastic finger felts, plastic inserts are much more friendly. They they, they work much better. Another thing I recommend doing, uh, getting is a felt disc. Really good for getting the sides of shanks really perfectly polished. Well, it starts them off really well. I just use this polishing grease on it. Gets them really, it almost cuts them back really flat. So it, it makes them, gets you to the next stage, like beyond just a handmade looking thing. It's a really beautiful, like flat shine on, on the sides of rings. Um, yeah, but not good for getting scratches off. So you've got paper things really, really thoroughly. Then that will do a good job of getting your paper marks out. But sometimes you still need to go around it with a proper mop just to get some lines out. Because they're not, they don't get it really perfectly smooth. It's quite, it's quite ridgy, I guess. So it's spinning that way. You are putting kind of very gentle lines on metal. Uh, so you need to go across it with that as well, quite often. Uh, next thing you're gonna need, these bristle brushes. These are really good. Someone, one of the patrons, uh, asked me about polishing the posts on earrings. Uh, I would use something like this. This one's quite stiff, but it's not too stiff. Uh, just move up and down. Well, that stays still, doesn't it? Move your post up and down as that's spinning. Does a good job of getting scratches out of the post. Uh, they're not, if you hold things still, they're quite severe. They can cut into metal. 
But if you keep things moving, they seem to be quite friendly. Uh, when they're brand new, not very fun to put something on it because a lot of the bristles come out. It's obviously quite dangerous for your eyes. So maybe get some goggles for your eye protection. If you've got these safety goggles, yeah, I have a complaint because every workshop or I remember at school, they were just a nightmare. They're really strict on you wearing eye protection when using a drill or a lathe or a polisher motor or anything like that. But they give you eye protection that's just all scratched and just a nightmare. It's just like all misty. You can't see through it. So that's not safe. It's supposed to be a safety precaution piece of uh, equipment. But if you can't see through it, it's more dangerous. <laughs> you need to see what you're doing. Of course you do. So if, this, if you've got these, look after them. Maybe... I used to keep these in a bag, I don't know what happened to that bag, but like I'm putting these in a bag, you should perhaps keep your safety goggles in a bag. Just protect them from being all scratched up and getting all dusty as well, because they do get a bit dusty. So yeah, if you've got eye protection, it's sensible to wear them, but make sure it's got a nice clear front. Uh, what else we got? Bits of leather. I cut off a few shapes of leather because things, when you're polishing, get really, really hot. Especially silver, it conducts heat loads and it stays hot as well. Platinum gets really hot, but it seems to cool down quickly and it only gets hot in a really local area. Um, silver pieces, especially if they're a bit big, once they get hot, that's it, they're a nightmare to hold on to. Uh, so if you've got a bit of leather, like you can squeeze things really hard, it's probably safer for you as well. You're less likely to, for something to catch on the mop and then slip as well. If you can squeeze onto it really hard because you're not worried about the temperature it's getting, uh, yeah, probably a bit safer to use. So little bits of leather like that, so something quite thick but not too stiff then you can really polish stuff really nicely. Um, also, I've had things loads of times get so hot, start to get smoke off the leather, almost starts to start a fire. <laughs> I just dug this out my graveyard pot of previous YouTube videos, <laughs> mounts and stuff I made. Uh, so this is a good example. Like say you had a ring, you had to size it, put a piece in or whatever. You, uh, you now have to give it a polish. So I'll just polish this one quickly. First of all, before I start any polish at all, I papered it down to the finer grades of paper. I didn't go to like the 1200 or 1500, whatever it is, a really smooth one. The medium grades, like I think it's 650, my paper on my buff stick. So not that extra coarse 240, it's not really enough. You can, you can polish it out, but you're giving yourself more work. Because polishing is quite a dusty, dirty job, I would rather do more time, more effort at the bench using diff going down to smoother grades of paper in, because then that just makes the polishing so much quicker and easier. So extractor fan on. For this grease mop, spin it. Make sure you get it on the right way around. Like my red one is a bit difficult to see. So I put red in. That means red only mop. Don't mix, don't mix the polishes on your mops. Only for red, only for green. Like that big soft one, only for yellow. Only for the grease. Like don't, you can't mix the polishes. It kind of makes them not work, work, work very well. So yeah, like red in, so in goes on the inside. So that's why I can just see easily, green in. Uh, this one's easier to see, so I didn't bother writing on it. Anyway, I spin it up kind of tight, turn it on. This one's speed adjustable, but they're not all like that. But not necessarily a good thing, you just want to spin it quite fast. I've never really felt the need for adjusting the speed. The only time I do run it slower is when I'm using, where is it? This thing it puts like a coarse finish on some of my skull rings I used to make. I used to put like a matte finish on it, but that at a slow speed is good. Anyway, so some, some people, there are other jewelers I work with, used to polish things really well, but they would do things differently to me. So maybe there's an element of, there's not just one way it works and you can't do anything else. It's just what works for you. So I put this grease on, I just go right across it. Sometimes you need to get into a corner, so you put more on the corners, but basically you just get it on there. Uh, you don't have to go mad. Like I've seen people like, when I finished my apprenticeship, there was already a new apprentice, so I was kind of training up my own apprentice before I finished my apprenticeship. Uh, he used to just put way too much on, and it's all melting and spitting everywhere. If you've got like molten grease sticking all over your polisher motor, you're putting too much on. Just give it a wipe. Hold on to it tight with my fingertips, facing this way. That's spinning down, yeah, so when you touch it, it's going to be resistance and pull it down, so be ready for that. But if you're your first time using one, just go gently. And then I just move it across, rotate it a little bit. So I'm polishing like that. Rotate it, rotate it, rotate it. So I'm just gonna work all the way around it until like it's uncomfortable and I turn it around. Do the same coming back the other way. A bit 
more grease. I mean, silver, so easy to quick and easy to polish. I mean, it's kind of done. In platinum, I'd be here a lot longer, double checking it's smooth and everything. So, I'm going to use the corner now. I've polished, I polished it that way. So you can see I've, I've polished it that way, and now if I go across it, it comes up much more of a shine straight away. This is a uh, D-section shank, so I'm kind of going around the side at an angle, not just going straight on top. There's a lot of things I'll do naturally, so I have to kind of think, watch myself doing it, and then explain. So yeah, you see I'm hitting that way, that way, and now I'm going at an angle, just because it's got that curve on the top of it. Just keep the piece moving all the time when it's on the being polished. Now, I've got nice flat sides there, so... Where's my disc? I'll show you my disc in action. I always have the polish on one, one side. No, no rule for that, but that's what I do. And I've got a dodgy on-off switch. A bit of polish on that. Holding this, just there's no tilting or nothing, you just hold it on the side and just move it. So I put it flat to it and then sort of drag it off. And this motor's got no torque. Very easy to stop it. See that? Not showing up, a bit of shine on it already. Both sides. It's quite it cuts quite a lot, so be careful if you've got like a head of a ring. When you're doing the side of the shank, don't bang the head of the ring into that corner because you, you may mark it put a little dip in it. That would be bad news. So we're done. Let's do the uh, inside now. Basically you don't don't move on to any other polishing until you've done every part of the ring with your grease first. Get, you're just doing all the grease in first. You don't like do that, then rouge it, and then go back to that to do the inside. That would be a bit kind of uh, silly. Finger fails, just do that, just wipe it across. You don't have to put loads on. Obviously, make sure you've got it holding it really securely in your fingertips. Be careful with this. And now, what I'm doing is I'm rotating it around like that. Just making sure I'm getting every part of the ring inside polished. And then also, I will hold it in position, then I'll hold the ring, slide it up and down while simultaneously going around it. Turn the ring round, see that, and then do it again. And I keep looking at it, just making sure you've, um, making sure you're actually polishing it. Okay, so that's the outside, the sides, and the inside done. I will now... I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the inside. Next stage for the inside. Green. I've only got green. I don't bother with red on the inside of uh, with the finger belts. We'll go back to the inside in a minute with another technique, I'll show you that when I get to it. So next, green, green in, goes on this way, turn it on again. Now with the green rouge in, I tend to not go right across, I like to just put it on like half, maybe two thirds, just from two thirds across to the outside. And the reason I do that is, when I'm putting jewellery on, it goes on the polish and then this corner of the mop has no polish on it, so it's almost like polish goes on, polish goes off. Wax on, wax off. And that's why I do it. I find a good result with that. But I've worked with people that didn't do that. They just put it right across. They do all the polishing like that, and they've got good results as well. So try and find what works for you. But you can see that, that's coming up really well already. So I think the rouge mops pull a bit less, but you should still hold on tight. 
So I'll go around the whole thing, same as before, holding it straight to the mop, and then sort of go around it at an angle. Make sure you're getting the corners nice and polished. I'm going over the head now. I didn't work on the head. This is, I'm assuming this is like a, uh, like a, a repair, like a, a ring sizing. So the head didn't get worked on, but the shank is all papered up. But I touched the head just so it's all evenly polished. Otherwise, you give it back to the customer and it'll be a really beautifully polished shank, but the head will look all secondhand and old. That's kind of kind of done, really. Just touch up the inside. Also, one more thing: these little bits of leather, like they're they're good for when you've got a polished piece and you've got to put it down for any reason. I put it on the leather. I don't want to put my freshly polished pieces on on metal or even on wood. <laughs> put it on something soft. So I think I showed this on the channel before. This is like cotton cotton wool roll. That I couldn't buy in Japan, so I had to get my mum to buy it in England and send it over to me. <laughs> Cut off a section like that. Uh, let's spin this. Hello. I hold it flat in my hand. So with that in my hand, I just touch it on. Uh, if you're nervous of getting dirt on your hands and you're wearing rubber gloves, don't do this because the rubber grips that. And uh, obviously that's dangerous, you wrap your fingers around it, that's going to hurt. So, with this one, touch the green on it. Hold this gently, got your fresh polish on there, and I'll do the same as with the finger felts, but with this. I've got only in a small area, so again, wax on, wax off. Polishing it on, polishing it off, turn it around. That brightens up the inside really nicely. Silver. Silver polishes up really nicely, but you rarely see nicely polished silver online, from what I'm seeing. I think most people can't polish. It's a strange thing, because silver, out of all the precious metals, is by far the easiest to get a nice shine on. But I always see, well, just looking through Etsy, all the silver stuff, nothing's polished. Um, so please share this video to everyone, because I want people to polish things nicely. <laughs> You, uh, you spent all this load of time and effort learning how to make jewellery and uh, obviously the hours you spent at the bench actually creating it. Why not finish a job off like 100% and get a nice polish all over it? Right, so I'll leave it there. It's just one of those things, there's just so much to talk about. Uh, I'll never get it all in this video, so that's enough for this one. So that's part one, polishing. Uh, I talked about safety, I talked about the, the actual mops and stuff, differences, differences and what they do. Showed you actually polishing, and the little techniques I use. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of it. That's enough for part one, I think. So definitely I'll be keep coming back to this because there's loads of different tips and advice I could give on, on the, how to hold certain things. Sometimes you need a pin vise for certain stuff. Uh, yeah, anyway, I'll just leave that for a future episode. So I'll, I'll create a new playlist for polishing because it's something that's been requested a lot and I think people would like to know. And also, I don't think a lot of people can do it because what I see on Etsy and online and stuff, people don't polish their jewellery properly. And silver is no excuse. It's an easy metal to polish and get a nice finish on. So, uh, yeah, cool. Right, I've got to say thank you to some patrons. We've got Norman Davis and Donna Venables. Thank you, guys. I really, really appreciate that. Been chatting with Norman today. He's a 72-year-old and he's starting to make jewellery. So that's cool. So it's nice to have a little hobby. Making jewellery is a nice skill because it's... It's a nice thing to just sit down at home and make something. It's creative, it's like satisfying. Um, it's a nice little thing to do. But there's a pen potential for making money is also very high as well, because you can sell the things you're making. You can offer to repair things for local people. Uh, just polishing, ultrasonicing, is all worth money. You can, you can do a lot with it. So, especially with um, the economy, I think people are kind of living in a kind of fantasy land where they think, stocks are really high and like they're getting money from the government and that's going to last for a long time. I think it's all going to crumble and I, I, I suspect this year we're going to have a massive like financial kind of crash. So <laughs> the more options you've got for making money, uh, the better. And then maybe you should study investments and how to, how to look after the money you've got as well, because that's all good. It's going to help you out in the future. So yeah, um, if you want to learn more about making jewellery, I'm uploading full instructional guides, like part ones are going on YouTube, but the full instructional guides are only for patrons, so you have to become a patron to see, to get like kind of like my equivalent of online courses. But it's cheap, it's only £5 for 
um, access to all the full instructional guides. Not just one, not each, like all of them. Like they're all on Vimeo and I give you the private links to them. So yeah, I think it's well worth the money. And as the more amount of videos go on there, just the value of it uh, increases loads. Um, the maximum is 10 pound a month and that gives you uh, a lot of exclusive content and then ability to contact me directly and I help you out with your private jobs and stuff. So yeah, which a lot of people are doing. So that's cool. Um, I want to mention as well, I'm starting off a YouTube like membership and I would like to replace Patreon with the YouTube account by the end of the year. So once I get that going, I will kind of like direct people to YouTube rather than Patreon because Patreon is uh, a lot of extra work and I think it's going to be much easier for me and more convenient for other people as well just to go become a YouTube member. So that's something that will happen in the future. Thank you for watching. Sorry I talked too much but there's a lot to explain. It's an educational channel so I have to talk a lot as well as show you what's going on. So I'll end it there. If you haven't done already, click like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will see you next time for more Diamond Mountain. Thank you, bye.